Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step project episode number 137. My name is Glenn Gers, and I come to you every Monday through Friday, if I can make it, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to let you look over my shoulder share my screen as I write a script in the hopes that I can demystify the screenwriting process because process is really important and very few teachers talk about that because they're talking about what makes a great script and what sells and what's all that stuff that's a result of the process. What you really need to do to get to that is what do you do every day? How do you do this scene by scene, line by line, day by day? So that's what we're going to do, because the worst thing that you can do with a script is not write it. The only thing I can think of to do here is show you my process. It's not the best process, not the only process. It's just the process that I worked out for myself in my 25-year career writing movies and TV shows. I'm just going to walk you through it every day in case it will help you when you're facing your blank page and you can say, oh. I saw how he did that. Maybe I can try my version of that. Everybody's different. Everybody figures out their own way. Use what is good for you. Throw out the rest. You do not have to watch at all. This is not like a step-by-step. If you do this, this is how you have to learn every step. I just mean you're going to watch me step-by-step. Okay, that's the intro. Let me say hello to a couple of people. Hello, this is Kitchi. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Roddy. Haven't seen you in a while. Okay, let's get back to the task of cutting, because that is what I have been doing and what I'm going to be doing for quite a while here. Okay, Um, what we're doing is going through the 90-page rough draft, which is way too long. But sometimes you just got to get it out of your head, out of your head and onto the page. That is the most important thing, because then you have something to work with. You have stuff you can say, oh, this is actually the cool part. This is actually the part that I don't need because I said it already. That's what we're doing now. We're going through and I am just cutting as much as I can. I'm not even worrying about whether the scene works or even if I have to rewrite the scene. I'm just getting rid of excess words, excess beats, excess lines so that I can start to make some sense out of it. Um, Hello, Jeff. Good to see you. Glad you are here. Hi, Jean. How are you? Okay. So, for instance, this speech, it's way too long, but I'm going to leave it because I still haven't figured out exactly what it's about. That's too much thinking for the cutting phase. I am just cutting. Will you be here a few days? Nope. No, I need to get back home. I need to get back home. Back to no, I need to go back tomorrow. No, I need to get back tomorrow. Get back home. It's a lot of words. Go back. No, I need to go back tomorrow. I'm staying at the hotel. Um. Okay, so now we start this whole other section of the scene. He says you were divorced. Then. Um, and, and you know what? We decided this is no good. This is unimportant. Um, so let's just cut it. Just, he, he, never, he just never got around. Okay, so this is cut, 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 cut. Hello, Maritletoso. Um, all right, no more music. We just don't need any of this. No, no, no. We have heard about this already. 
Oh, look at look at the cutting. We got we cut a page. <laughs> we cut a page. Yes. Uh, boom. Let me see what. Um, You know, he doesn't know this yet. Boom, boom, boom. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Cut, cut, cut. All right, that's nice. Uh, I'm leaving that just because it's an interesting line, and I don't know, maybe I could do Oh, wait, Irving Rushing has, has given us some crap here. Let's ban Irving. Irving, I am sorry, but you are not a real person. OK. Probably going to cut some of this, but for the moment, I'm going to leave it. Cutting, 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 cutting. <laughs> One more on the floor. That just sounds, that sounds, that sounds, uh, drastic but but you know what I'll take it yes um I don't know who the hell you are uh ba -ba -ba. Jeff I'm in hack slash mode on my current draft as well my clever and excise with public yes um cool Cool, that's great. Whenever, whatever sections you do well, um, I tend to because I, I'm just so unlikely to finish a draft. <laughs> I make that my number one priority when I'm starting a draft. Um, if I stop, I, I'm I'm doomed. I will rewrite the first act fifty times and have no idea really what I'm trying to get to. So. Um, so that's why I go all the way. But everyone is different. This is super important. Every single writer is different, and every single project that every single writer does is different. So you can't make some rule and say, this is it. Everybody should do it this way because it just ain't going to work. It's not helpful. Uh, okay. So lots and lots of words. Um, we meet Zina Morano, 23 years old, on the sofa in the living room. Well, does the sofa matter? No. Okay, so do we really need all of these bits? No. Okay, a few less words, one less line. Um, hello, other Luna reaction. Yay, first time. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Hello, Kirby Fungi. <laughs> uh, welcome, other Luna. Yes, welcome. Uh, it's, it's so cool when we get people who have not been here before. Welcome. Feel free to ask questions. Um, I am just cutting. That's what we're doing here. I have got I'm on page 13 now of 91 pages. I am trying to get it down to 60. I'm not going to get it down to 60, but if I get it down to 70, that would be fantabulous. Let's just see how it goes. Um, because frankly, even if I get it down to 60, it's not going to be the right 60, but at least I'll be working with something that's that's somewhat like a script. Um, Oh, so, for, so right now I'm just taking out every word I can because words can be brain clutter. So for instance, large, airy, luxurious house. Well, I'm going to say that luxurious means it's probably pretty large. So boom. Uh, South Africa. Hey, Mogabatsi. Nice to have you come in. I am grateful that you are here. Uh, this is so much fun when people come in from 
all over the world to share the fun. Heidi, hi, Phil, Jay. Um, this is, is uh, it's just the process. Oh, happy to share it. Happy to ask questions. The main thing I'm doing right now is just cutting words. Um, in fact, airy, nah. Not hers. Swing pool behind, beyond giant sliding glass, beyond giant glass doors. You know what? Who cares if they slide or not? Maybe they slide, maybe they flip up. Who knows? Just getting rid of words. This is just a joke we don't need. You can only have so many freaking jokes in your set descriptions before it becomes annoying. Um, a wannabe influencer is good. 23. 23 years old. No, we don't even need this. We're just saying it's great. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Now, we went from all that description, because honestly, the swimming pool is never going to come up. So, um, okay, there we go. There we go. All right. Um, a question from Jeff. Have you ever felt that you've overcut? Uh, yes, absolutely. This is why you do not you work in your draft. You make a copy. <laughs> that is absolutely fine. Uh, yes, it is possible. You can't, you know, a, with a, a fair amount of experience, hopefully you get a sense of, of that and you don't keep uh, rethinking your thoughts. But sometimes it's an experiment. You make a copy. See, how much can I cut of draft two? Draft two is is great, but you actually kind of miss a certain scene. You go back to your original, you find it, you copy and paste it, you put it in, all solved. The thing you do not do ever is take work you have done and ruin it <laughs> in your second version. You make a copy, keep an archive. Here, look. In this, I have an archive. And in this archive, I have all sorts of drafts of the text from different dates. I do that partly because I'm letting you guys see, but different outlines, drafts of the outlines, then the actual first draft with its notes and stuff that I did. That's all uh, in the archive that I keep just to, to not lose things. What if I need it? Uh, so that's that's my solution to that. Because yes, you can overcut. But but the important thing to do is not try and figure out now if the thing you're going to do, you'll regret later. You can't. The whole point of later is that you're seeing things that you couldn't see now. So what you want to do is do the thing you're doing when you're doing it and just make sure that you're not doing it in such a way that you can't undo it if you decide that you don't like all of it. Then you're safe. And that's what we want. We want to write safely. Okay. Now, you see, the thing is, here's a line that suggests that. I'm going to leave this, but this and this are actually kind of redundant. Okay, working her phone. Oh, where are you going to be? Pennsylvania. Pencil. Why? This is 
an interesting line because it would actually be funny, but I don't believe that it, it fits the woman. And it's certainly, we don't have room for a lot of that. So what's in Pennsylvania? What's in, what's in Pennsylvania? Uh, um, actually, I need to, um, in this case, because I am specifically trying to identify this person as coming from a certain region, which has a certain personality. Um, just like if you said Chicago, New York, Boston, Alabama, if I'm saying like different areas have different uh, personality types that people recognize them as. And because I'm using the cliche of that type to begin Zena's character, she'll develop complexity. But at the moment, I want to say she is a, a, a Los Angeles suburban area, well-off influencer type. Um, she's a, 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 a mini Kardashian, um, and the Kardashians are specifically Los Angelinos. And so therefore, I'm, I am trying to suggest that. Um, I was actually thinking of saying like what county <laughs> or, or what town, but the truth is it doesn't matter. Um, SoCal, Southern California is different from Northern, the Bay Area or Northern California, or certainly different than Nevada or someplace else. Um, okay. Maybe just why. Now, here's the thing, and this is really important. It's kind of fun to have a Pennsylvania a friend of mine just died. Uh, but I think it's actually better to just go, because the mom, uh, uh, the gag with the mom, it's it it's not that funny. What's funny is, what do you think about fish for dinner? I won't. I won't be here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now here's the other thing. She's working her phone, meaning uh, what I'm assuming is she's actually like making um, airline reservations. However, then she gets a call. Um, she's picking up, so I don't have to say into phone. Yeah, I'll leave that. I mean, like, there's stuff you don't have to get it all at once. Nobody gets it all at once. Let me see if I've got that here. Yeah, no one gets it all at once. You don't have to get it all at once. You just have to get a piece of it, and then later you'll get another piece, and you'll things will have different sense of proportion if you just do the best you can each time you go through it. Go over it and over it and over it. That's my advice. Yeah, no, I thought Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania was funny too, but proportionally, um, uh, tone, yeah, tone isn't even the question. The question is proportions. The Madeline's mom, uh, Zena's mom, just isn't as important enough at that moment. Um, but you know what? I may actually end up putting Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania back. Um, but right now we are trying to cut and um, one of the things that you don't want to do is give people leading questions for no reason. It's just an awful thing to do to the audience and the actor. It's just like, where are you going to be? I'm trying to think, is there a way she could just say, I won't be a friend of mine, just died. I won't be here. A friend of mine just died in Pennsylvania. I'm going to Pennsylvania. I'm going. No. I won't be here. Eh, you know what? We're going to leave it for the moment. Um, <laughs> oh my God, you have friends in Pennsylvania? Um, I 
All right. So this is interesting because here we have Madeline declining the call, and then we have her picking up the call. So that's confusing. I'll deal with that later. Um, who, who, who are you? Change the punctuation here. And you know my number. Uh, I know your name from, of course, from George. Uh, uh, Leading questions are, um, one must push the story along, but that does not mean leading questions. We can get, we can get around that. We can do it. Um, yeah. Okay. A leading question is a question that the person is asking just so that the next person will get to say their next line. You know, <laughs> like, like, who do you know in Pennsylvania? Like, or, um, you know, um, where are you going to be in this case? Um, now, because the truth is, she could be just like going out to dinner. Like her mom, it's not a suspicious thing to say, I won't be here. Um, and in fact, that's actually a key point. I won't be here. A friend of mine is in Pennsylvania. A friend of mine died. I just died in Pennsylvania. Um, which is interesting because she's already making her plans to go there. Huh. I don't know. I have to think about that. Um, that this whole thing is going to change anyway because Madeline is going to call earlier. Um, but my point about leading questions is, if the person who's asking the question in the scene is really doing it just to give the other person the opportunity to say the next bit of information, it's the 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 energy of the scene drops because the person who's asking the question doesn't really have a good reason. They're, they're, they're not playing their part of the scene. They're just serving the author. Uh, that's a leading question. That's a that's a, a filler question in order to keep a block of information broken up. Um, and you should just be conscious of, I don't want to do that. Um, yes, that is true. Um, uh, the, Jeff is saying that that getting in as late as possible, coming in late is 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 uh, helpful in that you you, you have people uh, mid conversation and they don't have to do introductions and things. Hello, Wolf. Glad you are. Yes, I knew that. Uh, glad you are here, Wolf. Glad you are doing OK. Uh, let's see. OK, so. Your name, of course, from George. It's from George. So I searched for all the. Now, I, this is a case where I want to leave this long because though what's funny is that she's so like a, a detective y. Um, I knew your name, of course, from George. So I searched all the Madeline Morris. I searched for all the. And I broke that down by age. So then there was really there weren't that many. It's, this, this is just funny because it's like way more detection than one would expect. Um, uh, and this is clever because it means that in the intercut, we will see that Madeline is seeing proof that Zena does know George. Um, In the East Village, um, in New York City, back in their musician days together. Right, that's full, fair. Um, and then there's a software you can use that can age or de-age photos. And they use it for victim profiling. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm the, the inappropriateness of what Zine is telling her is going to.
Okay, that's a funny page. That's a funny run. It's good because we're first of all we're getting the sense of Zena's um, Zena's oversharing, um, which is part of her game to um, connect with people and manipulate them, um, and also we're bringing the 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 web sleuthing into it. Um, so that's all cool. Okay, um, so what what are where are we? What are some ways to get around leading questions? Um, the hardest of, get, of getting in late, getting out early, it's tough. Um, this is an interesting question. Um, yeah, getting out late and early, but that's um, but the, the point about that is that sometimes, like the point of this scene is actually introducing two characters. So I don't want to get in so late that I don't get to introduce the characters because that's literally the only point of this little interaction. Um, so in this case, getting out of leading questions means to think about what each character wants in that moment that would be revealing of them or interesting or have something to do with their lives, not with just the information. That's how you get around leading questions. You say, what is this person's essential thing that I'm trying to get across? And how does that relate to this moment and what their take on this moment is? Because that's really what a, a, if somebody's just asking questions randomly, it's boring. But if they have questions that are revealing who they are, which is, often our questions reveal more about ourselves than they do about the thing we're asking about. Um, and that's how you get rid of leading questions. Uh, make sure to write that down uh, the, so we can see we talk about that. Uh, OK. Oh, Jennifer Nicole is here, and she's asking me something. Feedback from a screenplay class. I was told that it was a great but shame about the description detail after every scene heading. They said I didn't describe it enough. Oh, interesting. But I was told by a different contest that I over-described after the season. What is the rule of thumb here? Ah, this is really a great question. Here's the thing. No right answer. Everyone has a different opinion. That is the key. The rule of thumb is you decide what you like and you live with the fact that the people who don't like it won't like it. There's nothing else you can do. Um, this is a great example. Jennifer Nicole has told us a story. I'm going to show it to you again. Okay. Um, Jennifer says, I got feedback from a screenplay contest and was told it was great, but a shame about the description detail after every scene heading. They said I didn't describe it enough especially when I introduced a new character, I didn't describe them and their features. By the way, just personally, describing people's features is bad screenwriting. Whoever gave you that note is wrong. Every actor, there's no way you'll know what actor it is, and describing someone's features tells you nothing about their essential character and action, and that is what we need to know in a, in a screenplay. You want to talk about their personality. You want to talk about their their style. You want to talk about something about them that says something. Features is like the worst way to, to describe anybody in a screenplay because whatever actor they cast, that's what their features are going to be. So you don't want to say, oh, this guy has a big nose and blue eyes. Who cares? <laughs> they're going to cast who they're going to cast. That person is unlikely to have that. What's more, a big nose and blue eyes is not meaningful to a character. So this is really important. Don't describe people's faces. Don't describe their physical bodies if you can help it, unless it is very, very relevant to the story. Otherwise, describe their personality, describe their life, describe their job, describe their style, the things that an actor is going to do, the things that the character is going to use in their story. You do not want to describe physical attributes. It's just not important. However, um, <laughs> Jennifer was told by a different contest that she over-described things in the scene. And what's the rule of thumb? So the rule of thumb is ain't no rules on this. And everyone who says there is a rule is either fooling themselves or on some weird crusade <laughs> because they don't know what they're talking about. There is no rule on how it should describe. There is a safe rule. You don't want to go a half a page, you know, two or three sentences is fine. Um, if it's a major character, frankly, it's still better to do two or three sentences now and two or three sentences when they do something revealing. You don't want to block it all up. 
Um, if somebody's saying you underdescribed because you only had one sentence and it was just like 43 years old stockbroker, yeah, that's fair. Give us give us a little bit more if 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 you feel like it. But if you don't feel like it, don't. You know, maybe what you're saying is, hey, you're going to find out who this person is by what they do and what they say, and that's all you need to know. Cool. Live by that. That's your choice. Some people will like it. Some people won't. It'll sort of depend on other things. Uh, contest readers, they're not in the business. <laughs> they're not, you know, they're in the contest reading business. Um, so therefore, uh, you're just, you, it's its like showing it to a friend. So some of them are going to like it. Some of them are not. They're going to di like different things. You can't worry about that. You make your choice based on what you believe works best. Um, does that help, Jennifer? Okay. Look we'll at one of the places. Please. You know, the judges, I, I'm, I would be, uh, my guess is the judges are not writing that coverage. Um, judges usually of these things are uh, given the top two or three and they decide that. And all the coverage people do, because if you get like a thousand scripts coming in, Somebody has to wade through those, and they hire people at very, very low wages. They hire wannabe screenwriters. They hire screenwriting students. They hire whatever um, to read through those. They give them uh, uh, a form which says like seven out of ten, and then if somebody gets a lot of seven out of tens, they get in ahead of four out of ten. That's how it works. Um, yes, Jennifer, thank you. Um, so I would say, first of all, remember that the judges and the readers are probably separate. Um, and second of all, the the readers are just readers. I mean, honestly, I have gotten, it, it used to be very hard to see your studio coverage. Like if you sent something to a company, to a studio, the coverage was secret. They didn't uh, show that back to the writer or their agent. They just said, no, we didn't like it or whatever. However, um, now and then, somebody would slip up and send the coverage back with the script. This was in the days when they had physical paper scripts. And now and then, they would accidentally leave the coverage in the script um, or send the coverage back because they thought it would be helpful. And I'm always astonished at the coverage. You, you, let me put it this way. It's exactly the same as if you go to the movies and you were to ask everyone in the audience what they thought. Can you imagine the chaos of all those different opinions, that's what coverage is. <laughs> in theory, the people who are doing coverage are good readers, but what even is a good reader? For some, it's the people who, are, who know what the boss is looking for. That doesn't mean it's good or bad. If the boss is into auto racing and you write something about auto racing, that's good. It has nothing to do with whether the script is good. Um, so just in general, don't don't worry too much about coverage, especially in coverage places like contests or coverage stores where they they'll you know pay you pay and you get coverage. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> it's not easy being green as in a margarita. That's true. It's also not easy being a writer who submits your stuff to people's opinions. The best thing you can do, by the way, and frankly, try and do it in places where you don't have to pay for it, is just get a lot. Get a lot of responses. Then you'll find it's interesting. You'll go like, people get it, people don't get it. If they're giving you little nudgy, annoying comments on your format or your style, they're probably screenwriters themselves and they have their opinions. That's not, the, that's not what you want. You want the people who get involved in the story, the people who get the story, the people who get the characters and, and, and either like or hate it. But, but you don't want to be having somebody who's talking about superficial stuff. Uh, that is my opinion. Um, although I have to say, it did sound like um, they were just trying to, to give you helpful tips. It wasn't like you were rejected because of those things. You were you rejected because it's a stupid. Why do we have contests? Why do we have writing contests? Hold on, I have to I have to bring this up too. Okay, please watch this video. Contests are insane. Contests. The idea of a writing contest is dumb. Um, okay, so just, you know, I, I understand that right now that's the, the way that people sort of get sorted, but that's that's not unlike Hogwarts. <laughs> you know, I, there's a mystical hat that's telling you who, who's good and who's bad. Uh, all right. 
So yes, kudos for putting your work out there and getting a good response of any kind. That's actually great. You should feel great. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't. My my agent had them. She showed them to me. Um, okay. Another question: um, Is a film treatment a necessity when sending it to producers? No, no. Treatments are evil. Treatments are evil devil creatures. Don't do treatments. Treatments, unless you're being paid for a treatment or something, try not to do it. Um, a little synopsis, a little like paragraph is 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 great. You should definitely write like a little two line or one line summary of your script, what they call a log line, a real, and, and there's, there's whole articles on how to write a log line, um, and a synopsis, which should be basically, you know, just a longer version of that thing. Um, if somebody wants a treatment, see why. <laughs> you know, producers like treatments because they think maybe it's somehow like a short version of the script, but a treatment has nothing to do with the script. A treatment is like a book report on a script. And that would be like somebody saying, hmm, what's this Dickens novel like? Give me a book report on that. It's a sign of, of, of hopelessness. Um, don't, don't write treatments. Uh, if somebody's going to pay you to write a treatment, cool. Otherwise, don't do it. Um, Zena, a wannabe influence. Yes, exactly. That is exactly what I was going for. Um, here, coverage sent to an agency in the area. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just never know what who you're getting and what and why. And uh, yeah. Yes. Right. Um, no, there's there's famously um, the, 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 the notes, the, the, the studio notes on the movie network are out there somewhere. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Just don't don't worry too much about that coverage stuff. It's it's. It, don't don't spend your time on it. Let's let's write. Um, okay, cool, yay, good. Um, and and by the way, just Jennifer, uh, once again to to echo Jeff and to add my own, you're doing the right thing. You're writing a script. It's getting out there. You're getting positive feedback of any kind. By the way, anybody who's liking script in this world where there is a flood of scripts for somebody to say, oh, that was good. That's great. Keep going. Keep go from there. All right. Okay. So didn't she say she was so sorry? Yes. Uh, I am so sorry. I can't imagine. Right. Okay. So we don't need this. How are you? How are you? Are you okay? Yes, of course. yes, yes. How are you? How are you? Are you okay? I don't know. <laughs> I like that she's honest. How did you know, George? Corkboard, yarn, and pins. I'm going to put that in quotes because it's the name of a thing. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I thought maybe the police or something. Corkboard, yarn, and pins is the name of an online web sleuthing group that George and I were both in. Um, it's in the forums of Dr. Sleuth. I have to figure out whether that's actually the name. Okay, this is funny, but probably not worth the joke, the irritation that the reader is going to find. It's not a whole lot less lost. Um, well, maybe this will do it. Maybe that'll help. Uh, um, it's an online community. Okay, so she said online twice. Web solution. Yeah. It's, it's a community. It's an online community of home-based non-professional technology. Okay, that's a great line. So this one has to change because I, um, name of a web sleuthing? Well, web sleuthing says online. There we go. Um, name of a web sleuthing group that George and I were with? It's in the forums. Yeah, web sleuthing forums. That's cool. And then she says an online community of home-based non-professional detectives. <laughs> 
I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's what you're saying. We meet online. Don't have to say web sleuths again. Um, we meet online. That's one word. Online and try to solve cold cases or crimes that the authorities aren't getting. Right. Right. Aren't getting to. Aren't getting on. Getting on. Yeah, there we go. Because it's not a question of getting it right. It's That's a different issue. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, Natasha, I sent my feature to Blacklist and got a four. It didn't feel bad because at least it was not a one or two. Yes, absolutely. See, that's the thing. Also, these numbers, I, I hate to say it, but the numbers, I mean, if they said great things in the report, that's good. Um, the problem with numbers is like, what what's a five script versus an eight script? You know, I mean, everybody's going to have a different set of numbers and those numbers aren't sensible. <laughs> they, aren't, they aren't scientific. It's not like, oh, this character is good. That gives it a point. You know, nobody's actually doing that. They're just going to go with their feelings. Oh, that's a four. That's a five. It's like when I'm listening to music and I can rate it one to five on my, my Apple Music. It's like, that's just a way of me remembering which ones I like more than others. It's not like there's a definitive fourness or fiveness to this, this song. Uh, rating art by numbers is insane. Uh, so don't pay attention to that. Um, also, just remember... These, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to come back here, talk again. Uh, let's remember something. These uh, things like the blacklist, which, by the way, I think is a good thing. The blacklist is is not a scam. They are not trying to just rip people off and get their money. It's not a gig economy version of, of, of something. It's, it's an actual well-intended doing the best they can service. However, the idea that you are going to show your work to a bunch of, of other people and that their rating is going to be meaningful when they all may be, first of all, may be operating from different rules or values than you are. You know, the, the, the ratings online, first of all, only from people online. So therefore, if there's an audience that is not a particularly online audience, then you could be writing to an audience that is different than the ones who are reading. Also, you're getting an audience of screenwriters. That's not a normal group of people. They have all these rules in their head that they've been taught about where things should happen in the script or what kind of resolution is important or that a character must change or all these rules which I say are bullshit. They're not wrong. They're just not absolute. Okay, Any of these screenwriting rules are simply not absolute. They're possibilities. And what if you're doing something that's going against that possibility because you're trying to do a different possibility? There's a lot of readers who are going to be like, oh, no, that doesn't check the box. Boom, that's a three. That's useless. Don't pay too much attention to that. The main thing you want to do is just when you get a report, see, did they get the story? Did they have fun? Did they like it? Did they care? Did it work in those ways? Um, if they say this didn't work because the character didn't change or did change or changed too soon or whatever, then think, is that something I was trying to do? If it's not, don't worry about it. Um, this is just a fact of life. Art has no absolute values. And therefore, when somebody grades it or ranks it or contests it, you have entered a realm in which actual values have been shifted to another set and you need to be strong about saying i know what i'm trying to do and if you're trying to do what you're doing and it's going okay fine if you get a three you get a three if you get a seven you get a seven the important thing is that three script when they hit the right person will be a 10 and that's you know if you, if you don't get any good responses yeah take that seriously um thank you uh Yeah, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm actually preparing a video on that. This idea of optimizing um, doesn't work for art because the whole point of art is that you're not trying to get the single best piece of art. That's, that's not how art works. You want a lot of different things that do different things. 
It's not like you're going to go, oh, fine, I've got the best painting. I will put that painting on the wall. The rest we throw out. <laughs> that's that's not art. So so this this optimizing thing and art does not work. And it's really important to remember when you go from art values, creative values, audience values, because audiences work that way. Our audiences are not saying, I only want to watch one thing and make sure it's the best one, the most highly rated. Um, you need to remember that that optimizing thing is a business proposition. Um, okay. <laughs> the number one cow. Actually, I don't think that's true. I think the number one cow at the fair becomes like a breeding cow. Uh, so, you know, could be could be an advantage. Um, all right. Let's get back to this. Aren't eh, getting honesty. Taking seriously. Here we go. Taking seriously. I think you might have known. Just kind of work together on cases, but I love George. He was a doll. Yeah. See, this is this is yeah. That's it's a good speech. Um, so you are online friends. Do we need any of this? Where are we going to go? Yeah, I don't think we need this. Um, we know she's in California. Zena uh, Madeline doesn't need to know. So just what's in um all right. you worked on cases you worked on cases with george and now he's a case i'm not sure of her her attitude in this so let me let me see i'm just gonna leave it for now that's not a cutting issue that's a writing issue so if it were, I know that would be like so cool if it wasn't so awful. You think this, this killer did it? Killer did it? The one George was talking about in this podcast. Let's cut that. George was going to get him, and we need to pick up. Yeah, good. See, cut two sentences. Yay. Uh, not anything like the evidence. Like George's evidence. Like George's, like George's evidence. No, I, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm going to leave this, but I think I'm going to cut it later because it was like horrible distension from decomposition, distension from. This whole thing, she said it too many times. So, but for the moment, I'm going to leave it because I haven't decided which one. Um, is there anything you can do to help? Doing crime scene, crime scene cleanup. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, come on. Um, I can be there tomorrow. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is important. She, she doesn't know she's in California. Um, I think I'm just going to... Look at that, page 90. I cut, I cut a bunch of pages. Yay. Um, Uh, I'm an 
used to be. <laughs> this is funny. What if I just shut up? No pressure. That would be creepy. The sofa pillows. See, we get rid of some fray. The sofa pillows. That make, takes out on the. Punches a sofa pillow. A sofa pillow. Then throws it, hitting a shelf. Bric a brac, smashing a lot of it. Okay, that's better. All right, so we are just, uh, okay, cutting, cutting, cutting. Hmm. Uh, oh, let's see. People have been talking. Uh, okay. From some of the films I've watched in the past, they must be <laughs> making a lot of rank to Talking to the Predator in Halloween 2018. Um, actually, I liked the the latest Halloween remake. I thought it was I thought it was pretty good, um, but uh, I didn't see the Predator. Um, however, um, just to remember that the, they, they didn't rank those scripts at all. They 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 negotiated with uh, Universal uh, for the rights, and they they did it because they had a director uh, who they trusted, who said, "Hey, I could do that." Um, anyway. Um, but this is, you know, for them, uh, that those are number one scripts because, well, I don't know about Predator, but Halloween made a lot of money and is in the midst of becoming a trilogy. Um, not to say we all have our, <laughs> we all have the right to our opinion. And I absolutely think, you know, that's the ranking thing. That's the whole ranking thing. I, I, I like different things. Um, and I, uh, I think that what's interesting is what they make reveals what they think will make money. Because remember, they're not making stuff because they think it's good. <laughs> okay, they're making stuff because they think it will make them money. Um, and sometimes being good will do that. Um, now and then you get a company that's like, oh, we want we want to make money and be good. Um, and but but good, you know, different people. So for some people, Halloween is really good, and for some people, Nomadland is really good. What you gonna do? Um, yes, it's best to find your audience. Yeah, oh, that's uh, that's the thing. I feel like the best, and this is interesting because some writers, it's best to just like you do your thing and you love your thing and you defend your thing against all other things, and that's cool. And if you have a certain style. Um, if you love Marvel, then you're going to hate, you know, something that's that's small and quiet and, and street level. Um, and if you like small, quiet, street level stuff, you might hate Marvel. I kind of like to like everything. Um, I like to say, what can I get from this that's valuable, that's enjoyable, even if it's different? Maybe maybe there's things I can get from it. It just it's just me. I don't know what to say. Uh, hello, Aaron. Uh, work's been going good, actually. Oh my gosh, we're almost done. <laughs> the manual type of I don't have to imagine. I did it. Uh, I started in that era. I started 
didn't he? Actually, I'm going to bet he wrote his by hand. Um, anyway, my point is, yes, yes I, ca I cannot imagine, and I used to write on an electric typewriter mostly. I started on a manual, um, but pretty soon got into the electric. Um, Yes, yes. Oh, it's very inconsistent. It's it's absolutely. On the other hand, um, there's people who idealize. I have, I'll tell you just you know as as we as we get out of this episode, let's let's do some some talk. Um, here's the deal. Um, the thing about Halloween is, I thought the original was terrible. <laughs> I mean, that that was my personal thing. I, I had, and this is finding the good thing. I admire certain things about it. I think that the filmmaking was pushing into interesting new arenas that were in the, in the 70s unusual the the following somebody around for long periods of time and not saying anything that was creepy the the lack of explanation for the character was creepy somebody off screen explained but he didn't talk and 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 let things out and that was frightening to think of the irrational silent fear from him however a lot of that movie was just spinning its wheels and, and wasting time. And what I like about the new version um, is that it managed to maintain some of that old mythology, but still give us characters who are talking and, and changing and, and behaving um, in interesting ways. Um, and yes, they made those scripts because of the IP and because they love them. I, I know some of those people, and I'm telling you, they love horror. They love 70s and 80s horror. They love 50s and 60s horror. They know and love horror, and, and it means something to them. So I, I'm, I'm not going to trash it for that. That was not a purely commercial movie, actually. That was a truly well-intended uh, rediscovery of a myth. Um, however, yeah, there's, there's things you can completely tear apart about it. The super, super power stuff, super strength, I mean... That was sort of Michael Myers, uh, even in the original, getting up after he was dead. Um, okay. <laughs> Not, yeah, yeah. Natasha has, has a, a, a love-hate relationship with typewriters, I think, because we all love the mechanics of a typewriter, but the idea of, of doing what I'm doing now with a typewriter, oi. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I think. I think that Tolstoy... <coughs> Zola, Dickens, Dostoevsky, Balzac, they wrote with a pen that they dipped in ink. That's where you get crazy, man. They, they, they wrote magnificent works of art by hand. Whoa. Okay. Um, all righty. Um, yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. I can't, I can't argue. I won't defend. Um, typewriter, yes, yes. If you can, well, as we have said in the past, if you can... IBM Selectric is the best typewriter. Um, okay. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, guys, I got to go. Um, uh, and I will see you tomorrow to keep doing this because we did well. We're on page 17 and we got down to the, the draft is now 90. That's great. Uh, okay. See you all tomorrow. Go write something.